I felt like the context, you know, maybe you watch this movie and you want to go out and learn a little bit more. I just want to play a short clip about the troubles and then come back to what you were saying about the duration because I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, anyway, I felt that context would have helped a bit more. But again, I'm talking about being baby fed. So why am I, why don't I play this clip and then I'll come back and bounce off your point. 30 years ago, this border crossing was bombed by the Irish Republican Army. The attack was part of the Troubles, a civil conflict fought essentially over this border. Ireland is divided in two. The Republic of Ireland is sovereign and independent, while Northern Ireland is ruled by the United Kingdom. Irish nationalists and Republicans reject that division. To them, the British in the North are an illegitimate occupying force. So they took up arms to kick the British out and unite Ireland into one country. In short, to get rid of the border. That's why in October 1990, the IRA bombed the Kosh Quinn border checkpoint. Even in a conflict known for its atrocities, the attack stood out for its cruelty. I think that my problem is, to this day, and even during Brexit, the IRA and the problem with Northern Ireland and Ireland is a continuing problem that I've seen, you know, cause so much turmoil that, again, my expectations were when I saw this Belfast thing and they were going to talk about the height of the troubles and you go on YouTube and that clip I got was from a, a what was it? A Vice story. So there's a Vice story on YouTube called Northern Ireland's Invisible Borders. It's a two-part, 10-minute kind of documentary style talking about the issues and the troubles. And when you hear about some of the violence and the craziness, and I heard about this movie, because I've watched that. i watched that documentary a while ago, because in relation to another movie, which I'll talk about in a minute as well, I watched those clips. I knew about the troubles. And when I heard about some of the crazy, crazy, horrible things going on, and I heard kind of Brandon live through that, I thought, wow, this is... This story, coming to cinema, is really going to rock some people. It's winning all these awards. Again, I'm not saying I was expecting the pianist level kind of drama, but in a way, I kind of was. And because one of the more recent movies that I will relate to this, James, did you ever watch the movie The Foreigner with, Jay, with Jackie Chan and Pierce Brosnan? No. So The Foreigner, again, is like a Jackie Chan Liam Neeson type movie where Jackie Chan obviously is a legendary badass martial arts expert but this time he is getting revenge on I don't want to go into spoilers but the IRA for some of their bombing attacks that killed his daughter that's like the start of the movie that's the premise of the movie he's getting back at terrorists for what they've done so again a lot of people not just me but I've seen some people say yeah I was kind of expecting them to touch on some of the more atrocious things happen because a, a lot of people died in the troubles a lot of horrible things were done by the RRA so again again my expectation was seeing this from this young boy's perspective this is going to be a hard look at what happened the movie itself comes it has those moments where really bad things happen you know and I guess I was expecting more of that, especially because you know how Kenneth Branagh comes through the other side of it. But the way the movie went about it, it was a lot more um, milder than I really thought it would be. And uh, to be honest with you, there's a bit um, with the father and one of the, let's call him a gang members, and there's a lot of foreshadowing that some shit's going to go down. All through this movie, I'm like, by the end of this movie, some shit's really going to go down. And even the way that ended, I was kind of like, really? I mean, so, full dis you know, I feel like a complete piece of shit to kind of try to sensationalize the situation. But I feel like it's kind of a missed opportunity because I'm sure there's other children that lived through some of the, that didn't leave Northern Ireland, that stayed there and was probably had their whole lives completely destroyed. Like, you know, Grave of the Fly Flies type disparity. And for, I guess that's what I was expecting. And to get this was kind of like, I, I guess I was just kind of surprised that this is what Kenneth Brandon had to say because I thought it was kind of kind of mild, to be perfect honest to you. But again. <laughs> well, I, I think too, if it had been more, if it had been more of a history lesson or if it had been 
a darker movie with with more violence in it, I probably wouldn't have related it to something like Radio Days. Radio Days, there's a lot of like, oh, World War II is happening right now. But there's not talk about like concentration camps. There's not sure. talk about, you know, uh, sort of there's there, the, you know, Woody, Woody would have and has sort of shown, you know, you rooted against the Nazis like you would root against the bad guys in a movie back then during the war because you, you, you just sort of looked at them that way. This movie is a, a pretty, like like it, it this the kid Buddy who's played by Jude Hill who's really good in it, really yeah. natural, uh, fantastic for, yeah. for a child actor. Uh, I mean, it's it's gutsy to ever make the movie that you know just focused so much on a kid that age because they can so easily suck <laughs> and just sure. make the whole thing horrible. But he's really good in it, and he really, you you believe him as this little boy who just, he doesn't really understand what's happening around him. His neighborhood has become a war zone. You know, there's there's a, a blockade that's been put up that you, you know, you have to go through a checkpoint to, to get in and out of. And, and yet he's, he, even that sort of gets incorporated into his childhood. It's just a thing where, you know, he goes to school and he walks through the checkpoint and he says hi and they... They know him and they say hi back. And I think, again, this is relating it back to, to Woody and, and Radio Days. It's Kenneth Branagh looking back nostalgically at a period of time that you shouldn't maybe have nostalgia for. But when you're a little kid, you just sort of, you adapt. And, the, you know, you learn to play, even though there might be a bomb that might go off. Uh, when you go outside to play and in that way the, the movie is it's really more about the it, I, I get the feeling that it, uh, you know I we, we should get into this which is really there even though he's not in the movie Kenneth Branagh obviously is the focus of this whole thing because it's not only that he made the movie but it's really kind of his story um I don't particularly like Kenneth Branagh. Mm. And I don't mean that as a, he's a very good actor. He has made a lot of good movies. He's also a giant egotistical asshole. <laughs> so this movie is really, it's all about him. You know, I mean, even there's a part where, where Buddy is sitting on the street and in, a, in a, what I thought was a cute little Easter egg, he's reading a Thor comic book. Uh, you know, since Kenneth Branagh directed the first Thor. But there's a, a deleted scene, an alternate ending. Really? That's on the DVD. Oh. That is just awful. Really? would have ruined the movie. Oh, please, uh, please. I mean, you can spoil it for the audience now. Or yeah, what do you want to well, do? <laughs> it's, you know, a, a spoiler for anybody who hasn't seen it. You know it. what, the actually, James, movie, James, hold on to yeah. that. Let's do it at the end. Let's okay. do that right at the end. <laughs> so finish. We'll get back to that spoiler ending because I'm very curious. It sounds like mm -hmm. it sounds like you're about to give me what I wanted. 